Hi everyone, in my last video, SS Photo Pinup asked if I could show how to possibly edit in the painterly style of pinup, and he mentioned 40s artists Al Buell and Gil Algren. Al Buell was born in 1910, died in 1996 at the age of 86 years. He attended the Art Institute of Chicago and during World War II was rejected by the draft. Instead, painted a variety of popular and patriotic pinups for Brown and Bagello. Gil Alvgren was an American painter of pinup and he attended the American Academy of Art. Pinups were reproduced as nose art on military aircraft during the Second World War. He was born in 1914 and died very young at the age of 65 years in 1980. Now I have to say I am obsessed with Gil's work. I love his photo inspiration shots that show where he got the pose from and the little painterly tweaks that he did and oh my gosh so obsessed with his stuff. So thank you so much for sharing these artists with me and let's get into the video where hopefully I can show you how you might make your photography look a little more painterly. Okay, I don't claim to know how they did it. Obviously, they are traditional painters in that they use a photo reference as opposed to, you know, taking an actual photo and trying to create a watercolor effect. So I'm just going to show you how I would do it. And for those of you that are pinup, artists, this might really help you get more of that painterly effect. And I have to tell you that I had a blast doing this. So I did two images. I'm just going to quickly walk you through the first one. I'm going to get more in depth with the second one because I think I'm more drawn to that effect. So what I did know was, first of all, pinup. I, I've never done pinup. Now, after seeing these artists, I'm obsessed with it. And now I'm actually going to do a pinup shoot because I love it. I did do a boudoir set several years ago, and this was a client. And um, she was probably the closest thing to pinup in, in her attitude and the way that she posed and smiled and was kind of cheeky. So I thought, mm, I'm going to use these images. So this is just shot... Um, with a large four foot octa feathered across her and a little bit of hair light uh, camera right. Now, I think what I've figured out going forward is that you really, really have to accentuate your dodging and burning. You have to go a little overboard on it for it to actually look more painterly in this kind of effect. So I'll just walk you through what I did. So the first thing that I did was I did my um, dodging and burning. Okay, so you can see how drastically I really went in and I really emphasized the dodging and burning and I felt like this was really necessary to get this. The next thing I did was I just embellished her makeup. So I simply, if we open this up, I'm just going to turn all this off so you can see. I added eyeliner. I'm just going to zoom in so you can really see what I did here. So this was the eyeliner and all I did was had a normal blend mode and went in with the black. The next one was lipstick and lipstick is super easy to do. You just use an overlay blend mode and then if you want to bring back the highlights on the lips, I would always suggest to use um, blend if. Okay. Next I did, I darkened the eyebrows. You can see that I actually added brush strokes as opposed to just darkening them. Then I added some eyelashes and a little bit of blush. Okay, we'll just close that group, zoom out. And you know, the makeup really added to it. And as we all know, if your subject doesn't have super dark makeup on during the shoot, it will be faded out when you're doing your post. So I always come in and darken it all up. The next thing I did was added my little floral background because if you look at this there's really nothing very interesting about it it's a it's a unique pose but I went ahead and added my floral kind of look to it did a little bit of color balance here a little bit more color balance here 
and this was my final result okay and i think you know as far as the first artist look i don't shoot on white backgrounds typically although i'm going to start because i really want to try pinup so this darker background image always lends itself better for overlays and textures and stuff like that i did actually do something else to this image that i'll show you after the next one so this one here um i felt like this because it did have a lighter background i felt like it would be a little bit better for the final look of what we were going for so i'll just walk you through what we did here so the first thing i did was frequency separation i retouched the skin as well as all the fabric around so you can really see how frequency separation using the mixer brush is great for this kind of look the next thing i did was my dodging and burning again so extreme right like i went extreme so i'll turn off the dodging and that was my burning that was my dodging and like i said extreme for this particular look then i did my lips with a little blend if and i did my eyelashes i'm just gonna zoom in again so you can see so here's my lips and again, if you want to maintain those highlights, just use Blend If. How do you do Blend If? You double click on the layer. You can see I've got Blend If here. You double click on it. And what I did was I pulled the underlying layer to the left, and then I separated the two by holding down my Option key. And that just brings back those highlights, okay? And then I added some more eyelashes and I'm just going to zoom out again and you can see this is really starting to look more pin -up -y, just with those basic edits and then for this one here I added a sharpen layer so let's zoom in really quick so this is my sharpen layer you can see it really brought it back and then I just duplicated it because I wanted it even more sharp okay then I did a curves adjustment because I wanted to darken the darks and brighten the highlights and you can see that that really helped and I'll show you what this looks like. All I did was move the darkest point to the right and the lightest point to the left and that's what I got with that, okay? And then the magic happens. Then I did several steps using the filter gallery and I wanted to create that watercolor effect using watercolor brushes and this is the final result and I do honestly feel like this looks way more like a watercolor pinup than if we did it without this is still beautiful and you might opt not to do this but if you want to know how I did this I will walk you through it so let's turn it off turn it back on for a sec you can see there's a bunch of stuff in here so I have a couple texture files um, I have four or actually yeah three three filter gallery filters applied and selective color so we're just going to turn that off and I'm going to do a shift option command E which just stamps all of those I'm just going to pull this one underneath it for ease and I'm going to right click and I'm going to create a smart object. And when you create your smart object, that just allows you to apply various filters and you can change it, you can take it away, all of that stuff. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go up to filter, show all menu items, filter gallery. And the first tool that we're going to use is our sponge. So we're going to go to sponge click that here and keep in mind guys that you can't work in 16-bit if you're going to use the filter gallery so I had to convert these images to 8-bit and the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to leave my brush size at 2 I'm going to turn the definition to 0 and I'm going to keep the smoothness at 5 and you can see that it's taken away a lot of that grain and stuff and this is exactly where I want it to be so I'm going to click OK 
Now look at these little lines to the right here on this particular filter. Just double click it. Sometimes it takes a minute for this progress window to open up. But once it does, we're just going to adjust the opacity. And for this one, I'm just going to reduce it to 75 and click OK. All right, now we're going to go back up to filter. We're going to go to show menu items, filter gallery, and we're going to grab the palette knife for this one. The settings for this one are going to be 14 three and nine like that okay click OK perfect now we're gonna do the same thing we're gonna double click on the little lines here next to that particular filter and we're just going to adjust the opacity on this one we're going to adjust it to 40 because it's pretty, pretty strong. We are going to bring that down to 40. And that's more reasonable in my mind. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go filter, show all. We're gonna go to render. No, sorry, we're gonna go to stylize, find edges. Now we're going to double click on these little lines again. And this time we're going to change the blend mode to multiply. And we're going to adjust the opacity to 25%. Right about there. Okay. All right, so that's all that we're doing to get that painterly effect, which I think looks amazing. And then the next thing we're going to do is I should still have it open somewhere here. This one. So this is the texture that we're going to use for this particular effect. And what I want to do first is just grab my patch tool and just minimize some of these scratches on the paper. And it's, it's great to use a paper texture. I feel like it just, it works well for this. But what we're gonna do is we're just gonna minimize some of these creases because we don't want them to overpower the image. And this will just help reduce them. And that's good enough. You can come up here, go filter, sharpen, unsharpen mask, or choose whatever, whatever type of sharpening you like. But I'm just gonna leave it probably at about 25 and 25, just like that. And always make sure that you change whatever texture paper you're using. Make sure you go edit, convert to profile, and whatever color space you're in, which I'm in pro photo. Otherwise, you're going to get some weird color happening, right? So pull that over top of your image. And we're just going to hit Command T. And we're going to pull it over. I just extend it past the canvas a wee bit so that we don't have any edges that might happen. And I'm going to drag this underneath the smart object here okay now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a layer mask to the main layer here make sure we're on a black brush but we're gonna right click we're gonna right click and we're these are watercolor brushes you can use pretty much any watercolor brushes and it, you know it just depends on what you want but what I always do is come into my brush settings, turn on shape dynamics, my size jitter for sure, um, pen pressure for control, angle jitter for sure, we want that, pen pressure as well. You can also do fade, which works quite well with watercolor because you want some to be faded, some to be a little not faded. 
I'm also going to turn on wet edges. Um, if we go to brush, brush tip shape, you can flip it so that you get completely different. I do like to flip it. And then just turn that off. So all, all you're going to do here is, I'm only at about 40% flow, is make your brush quite large and you're just going to come in and you can see the brush is flipping and it's just adding that lower kind of texture. And don't worry about if you do this and it goes over top of your subject because you're going to come back in later with a soft brush and you're just going to paint that back. I'm just going to reduce my opacity down as well because I don't want it to be quite so heavy down here in the darker parts. I'm just painting this back a bit. But yeah, I would suggest starting off with a little lower opacities just until you figure out exactly what you want. And um, because you can't come in and reduce the opacity because we used it straight on the smart object, I would re recommend coming in and feathering that out just so that the edges kind of fade a bit more. And that's in your properties for your mask. If you don't see it anywhere, go to window and then come in here and see properties. Okay, and that'll turn that on. Okay, so now I'm going to right click. I'm going to choose a soft basic white brush again too many brushes clearly and I'm gonna leave the opacity and flow right where they are and I'm gonna come back now and I'm gonna using a white brush just paint that off of the areas that we didn't want it to be on our subject but it's good to keep your flow and opacity super low for this because then you can fade it out and make it look a little bit more uniform and blended I'm just going to pull up the opacity now and make sure that all of that is off our subject completely. Go back to my watercolor brush over here and I'm just going to Paint that back a little bit. Like so. Okay. Now we're going to come back to the texture layer, which is down here. And I'm going to put another layer above it. And using the same settings for this, I'm just going to start sampling different colored areas in the image to add back just a little bit of softness to that texture and a little bit of color. And you don't have to worry about this touching your subject because it's only going to be available wherever the texture layer is. And then you can come in and you can just change your color and add a little bit of more vibrancy, more saturation additionally. And it's pretty subtle. And this one you can reduce if you want to. And you know what a lot of people will do too is they'll do another one and they'll sample the skin color like so and just add a little bit of that peachy skin color 
just tiny dabs throughout just to kind of give it a little bit of uniformity. Like so. And you can see the before and after. It just adds a tiny bit, which looks pretty cool. So that's before, that's after. You can actually reduce the opacity of that texture layer and that'll really help as well. Something like that. But I feel like this just really does like have that pinup look, right? Let's do our selective color. I'm gonna add a little bit of cyan to the blacks and I'm pulling it down just a smidge. And then our neutrals, we're gonna add a little bit more yellow probably a two. Not going to add any red. Might add one of green just so that it's not quite so red. And pull that up to one. Let's go to our whites and I'm just going to pull the whites right up and that's going to bring back our highlights. So you can see the highlights right there, how, how wonderful now those highlights look. See the difference? That little bit of color grading. Color grading is key guys. Let's just reduce that color grading to about 70 and that's better. And we're going to do one more thing. We're just going to go to our curves and we're just going to pull the highlights up just a bit more. Most of these pinups are quite bright, which I really like. And I think I'm going to leave the black. Yeah, I'm going to leave that. Might even pull it up just a bit there. There, so write down those steps, record them on a piece of paper if you wanna do this, and feel free to play. So you can use any kind of texture, any kind of thing, but your dodging and burning is key. If you are very new to dodging and burning, you can go to my teachable school. I have advanced courses on dodging and burning, which will teach you everything you need to know in order so that you can learn how to master dodging and burning, which is you know entirely important part of editing. So now I'm going to show you what I ended up doing with this image. So I took the original image of Shola that I added my florals to, and then I did the exact same technique I just showed you. And I converted this image into probably more of a painterly looking image. And I really like it. I really like it. I think it turned out super cool. And you can see these are the same exact steps that I used. So I just really want you guys to try it, especially for those of you that are interested in pinup. Please comment below. Let me know what you think and let me know if there's any other artists or photographers styles that you would like me to kind of break down or do my own version of. And until the next video, I'll see you guys soon.